Now, please welcome the moderator of our session today, Peter Bryant. Peter is partner at Clario and senior fellow and honorary co-founder of the Kellogg Innovation Network. Peter is an executive business strategist with more than 30 years of experience developing and driving high growth strategies for companies in the US, Asia Pacific, and Europe. Peter has been involved in the resources sector for 25 years and most recently chaired a transformative effort with Mark Cutafani, the CEO of Anglo-American. Please join me in welcoming P Peter Bryant. Thanks, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. I was very excited when uh, John invited me to moderate this panel. Um, I want to confess I am not a miner and I'm not a mining engineer. And in fact, I did the sums. I first visited a mine in 1982, uh, which was Mount Isa Mines, which was part of a company called MIM Holdings. And it was to implement financial management systems on behalf of General Electric. Since then, I've been involved uh, with, the mining, with mining companies in a variety of different roles. Uh, in the last 13 years, very much with uh, the innovation efforts of the industry, <clears throat> starting with the fairly visionary industry leadership program uh, that Sam Walsh uh, initiated at Rio Tinto Iron Ore uh, back in the early 2000s, uh, through to the initiative that John just mentioned uh, that I've been co-chairing with Mark Kudafani, the CEO of Anglo-American. Um, so it's really uh, with a great deal of interest that I see that the program today uh, is kicking off with the topic of mine of the future. Um, I think it's important because I think the industry is, and many pundits believe, is an important crossroads in its innovation efforts. Uh, and the panel that we've assembled today, and please feel uh, for them, because I've got to sit up there for about 20 minutes without being introduced, but we will introduce them progressively uh, as they speak. But it's a very diverse group uh, crossing different commodities, uh, from hard metals to minerals to, uh, to aggregates uh, to the suppliers. So we're looking forward to a very energized debate around this topic. Uh, the way we're going to run this program uh, today is we're going to have a, a brief video. Uh, and just so you know, this video is a provocation uh, that is uh, there to spark debate and introspection, uh, not to be taken absolutely literally. So after that video, uh, I'll be making a few contextual remarks. Uh, then I'll be introducing each of the panelists who will speak for about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, you'll notice there are index cards that you all sat on uh, when you sat down. Uh, those do have a function, actually, and that is for you to write a question. Uh, that I'd encourage you to write. Uh, there'll be SME folks at uh, either end uh, of the aisles, pass them, and because the discussion we're going to have for probably for about an hour with the panel, I really want to encourage it to be based upon questions from the audience. Um, so otherwise, we'll, we'll have to talk amongst ourselves. Uh, so with no further ado, if we could uh, roll the video, please. Thanks. The world needs mining. Everything in life that is not grown must come from the ground. Our buildings, homes, cars, planes, power, and technology are dependent on raw materials. However, mining is broken. What was always a risky business is now on even shakier ground. Spiraling costs, government intervention, deepening pits, and lower ore grades have let down stakeholders. Not only do communities no longer trust mining, but it is becoming harder than ever to find and start a new mine. And as stakeholder expectations grow, the industry's social license to operate is at risk. The world needs mining to change. In 2012, the Kellogg Innovation Network convened a diverse group of leaders to recognize the problem and find a new approach. For a year and a half, this coalition met to create a new vision for what mining could be. Their approach, the Development Partner Framework, envisioned a mining industry with a new mindset focused on shared purpose, flourishing ecosystems, and competitive companies, communities, and countries. In a world where mining reinvents its approach, everything is different. Imagine the mining industry attracting the best talent, communities seeking to initiate mining projects to achieve prosperity and become diverse economic centers, Leaders from the government, NGOs, indigenous and religious organizations working with miners in tandem. Stability, security, and a strong civil society reducing risk and improving operations. And a sustainable and flourishing environment. What has been done so far? Here are some activities inspired by the DPF. 
new thinking, approach, and strategy for multiple players in the industry. New bridges have been formed to organizations that have an interest in mining outcomes but have not been engaged. A day of reflection was held at the Vatican and also at the Church of England. 20-plus faith-based investors and leaders have toured a variety of mines. The shape and direction of the conversation has fundamentally shifted. We encourage leaders of mining companies, communities, and other stakeholders to be partners in reshaping our future. We must work collaboratively to realize our shared purpose. It is time for us to lead, and it is time for us to act. To learn more, visit www.kinglobal.org or email us at mining at kinglobal.org. Remember a provocation. So I think, yes, we see a world of increasing demand for all the commodities that we produce. Uh, what we do is hard work, absolutely. Um, and a world that needs mining and all the resources that we produce. And sometimes I wonder, you know, does the world and society actually recognize its need for resources and mining? And that's another topic altogether. But nevertheless, I think the industry faces some severe structural headwinds uh, that are eroding both its financial performance and its social license to operate. Um, it's the view of many pundits that a new approach to innovation is urgently needed to deliver the kind of transformative solutions that will address the challenges and set the industry on a new course. The video touched on some of those headwinds, but let me just summarize some. Uh, in the last 15 years, we've seen operational expenses across all commodities jurisdictions you know, spiral at an average 10 to 15% per year. Uh, we've seen productivity decline across aggregates, across country, across commodities at the rate of 10, 12% a year. Uh, we've seen lo lower ore grades uh, so, and ores that are just getting harder and harder to get at. And they're all conspiring together to really you know, make it difficult from a financial performance perspective. Routinely, 20 to 40% overruns and capex are the norm now, which drives investors crazy. Uh, we see now 25 to $30 billion worth of projects that are on hold due to community activism. In the last five years, there have been $50 billion of expropriations due to government uh, activism and increased nationalism. Uh, we see more and more stranded assets that are uneconomic to mine because of current mining methods. And we see an underinvestment in innovation. The industry invests by a, most studies somewhere between a quarter to a half of 1% on R&D slash innovation, if you use R&D as a proxy for innovation. Compared to industrial companies, one and a half to 2%, oil and gas, 5%, and aerospace, eight to 10%. So is it that bad? So, you know, in 2015, many mining companies are really struggling to make the returns that their investors are looking for. But if you look at the history of prices, another picture should really be emerging. I know as an industry, we like to think about how far the prices have come off their highs. But I took a look at how far the prices have come off their lows of the year 2000, which was a mere 15 years ago. And the numbers are quite surprising because we don't pay much attention to them. Iron ore was $30 a tonne in the year 2000. And today it's $63. Met coal was $40 a tonne. Today it's $113 a tonne. Thermal coal, $25. Today it's $62. And gold was $280 an ounce compared to $1,264 an ounce. So we are making, tr our prices are way higher than they were 15 years ago, yet we're in the same situation in terms of making returns. So the questions this poses, is this a large scale destruction of value in the last 15 years? Have, to, have we to a large degree squandered, particularly from an investor perspective, the super cycle and the profits? And do we find ourselves with a significant innovation deficit that seriously needs to be overcome? So John Thompson, a good friend and president of the Canadian Mining Innovation Council and former uh, technology executive at Tech, says that today's innovation is focused more about on automating what we do today, but not fundamentally changing the process of mining itself. And he believes the greatest innovation is when we do actually change the process of mining itself to reach new, if you like, baselines for pricing, uh, environmental and safety. Ernst & Young in a report contends the industry has lost its ability to innovate, or that ability has declined. And finally, Tony O'Neill, who's the Group Director of uh, Innovation and Sustainability and Technology at Anglo-American, said, it's clear to me that sharpening our innovation edge is no longer optional, it is a must for the industry. So certainly my conversations with a variety of mining CEOs suggests that the whole topic of transformative innovation is top of mind and top of their agenda these days. 
You know, we're seeing, you know, Rio obviously is con continuing with its Mine of the Future initiative. Uh, we see Anglo-American and BHP about to embark on similar brand initiatives that are very well funded. Uh, the big question is, are the other CEOs, will they have the way for all to invest the kind of funds and budgets required uh, in these more difficult financial times? So big questions. So we have a stellar group, as I said, on this panel to kind of explore and discuss these topics. Um, and we certainly want to have a panel that is not 100% agreeable. And I think we have assembled a variety and diverse set of views. And hopefully you'll shake it up with some of your questions. So again, another reminder to uh, fill those index cards out that you're probably still sitting on.